This is Steampunk Star is an Aberstreet.com, and I wanted to do a video blog about the Paris attacks. I know it happened a few days ago, but I wanted to take in all the information. I don't have television, so I get my information off the internet. But uh, I went to CNN's website and I watched a news video about the what happened, and there's still suspects at large. Supposedly, some of them are cornered in. And there was multiple attacks planned by three groups, um, some of them being suicide bombers, some of them being uh, gunmen, and uh, there was one guy from Syria, I think it was six suspects, one guy from Syria, but there was people from, one guy that was a French citizen, and a couple people that were Belgium, or at least a few, I think, but they were mostly Europeans uh, of Arab descent. But, uh, the, you know, the attacks are horrible, never uh, to say, you know, never to say the less. But uh, the thing I'm worried about, you know, like you, I look on Facebook with Stan with France and the French president now saying they are at war and they're going to be launching airstrikes, I guess, against ISIS. Um, the thing I'm worried about, you know, I mean, yes, it's horrible that a hundred and 30 people or something like that died, but I'm also worried that this is this is going to turn into nationalism, an excuse for endless war. The United States has already been in endless war since 9-11, and with no end in sight, I mean, what, what's the United States doing in Afghanistan? They still have 10,000 troops there. What, what's the purpose? Osama bin Laden's already dead, uh, you know, supposedly less than 50 Al-Qaeda. Uh, members left there that are still fighting. So what? what's the purpose? What good is it for endless war? It only benefits the defense contractors, the defense industry. President Eisenhower had warned us against this. Like, endless wars evolve into more endless wars because they justify it by profit. I mean, I know a lot of it has to do with oil. Um, you know, you watch Abby Martin's Empire Files, we did a good gist of that. But, uh, and the United States is an empire. Uh, they don't like to say they are, but they are. Because if you look at all the democratically elected governments that the United States has overthrown over the years, including 1953 Iran, El Salvador, uh, Chile, many, many uh, democratic governments that the United States did not like because it went against business interests because it was leftist government. They were overthrown by force with CIA-backed troops. So, the United States does not have the moral high ground, nor does, you know, anybody, really. I mean, the thing I worry about is, I, my personal opinion, you know, the Russians have troops already in Syria, and they're apparently bombing ISIS. I'm worried if the United States and now France gets involved in, in Syria, are they going to end up fighting Russia? Because the United States wants us, the, the Assad government of Syria to go away. And the United States is also funding a lot of these rebels. And at times, a lot of these U.S. weapons end up in the hands of ISIS. Uh, I don't know if that's intentional or not. Probably not intentional, but who knows? And so it's the mess in Syria is largely created by the United States arming and training rebels and providing arms and doing airdrops. Uh, it's just made a bad situation worse. And the Assad regime, you know, is a dictatorship, but it is a secular government. And destabilizing the Syrian government, which they're trying to do, but Russia has propped it up. Russia has brought in naval infantry, and they brought in, uh, you know, they even manned the Syrian anti-aircraft defenses, which is why, you know, the United States, from what I understand, can't bomb western Syria, because the Russian manned anti-aircraft defenses are actually pretty good. You know, you got SAM missiles. Uh, Russia is actually training the Syrian military. And there's no real winners in this war. It's just a messed up situation. And the United States is only making it worse. And I worry that this is gonna could evolve into another global war. The 
the United States being in perpetual war for 14 years, I think that's the longest, well, since the Vietnam War, the longest time since the Vietnam War in the United States has been a war this long. But there, with the Vietnam War, the United States was proactively involved from 1965 to 1975. Actually longer than the Vietnam War, because we've been, the United States has been at war since 2001, and now 2015, 14 years later, there is no end in sight. There is a historical parallel to this, and that is the Empire of Japan. A lot of people, if you know your history, you'll, you'll remember that Japan, when they attacked the United States on December 7, 1941, they had been at war for 10 years prior. You know, they had invaded uh, Korea and Manchuria in 1931. Why did Japan invade Asia? Why did Japan invade the Pacific? Because they were short on resources. They were short on oil. They were short on, on you know, rubber. You know, they invaded, uh, I think, Saipan because they, of its rubber resources. And this is a very uncanny parallel to the United States. Why does the United States invade uh, Middle Eastern countries? Because they're short on resources. They want the oil. If the United States was really interested in propping up democratic governments, they, you know, they wouldn't, you know, be overthrowing democratic governments and propping up dictatorships like they've done in the past. If the United States was really interested in weapons of mass destruction. Why didn't they go to war with North Korea? Oh, that's right. North Korea doesn't have any natural resources. So there's there's a lot of contradictions in U.S. foreign policy. It really revolves around oil and opposition to those who oppose that U.S. grab for oil. And that's namely the governments of Syria and the governments of Iran. Um, there's been a lot of warmongering as well, as well against Iran. Um, I'm not saying that Iran or Syria are perfect governments, but I don't think it's the United States' right to get their thumb in everything. And I worry that this stand with France thing is just going to make things worse. And with Russia having a new Cold War in the United States, or vice versa, because it's Russia versus Syria, or Russia versus the United States in Syria, you have U.S.-backed rebels in Syria, now the U.S. is going to send boots on the ground in Syria, and you have Russia backing Assad with their boots on the ground and their air support. And Russia also has a naval base in Syria in the Mediterranean Sea, which a lot of people seem to forget. And you look at, you look at um, Ukraine, there's still a civil war in Ukraine. You have Russian-trained and backed rebels in eastern Ukraine, and the Ukrainian government is trained and backed by the United States government. And then there was that, there was an incident, I think last year, where there was a U.S. spy plane that almost got shot down by Russian fighter jets because it flew too close to the Russian border and was listening in on Russian military communications. It's just like something right out of the Cold War. We've, we've de-evolved back into the Cold War all over again. A lot of people don't realize that uh, Russia, even though they did give up a lot of territory, they still control about 90% the same territory that they had before. And Russia just reoccupied Sevastopol, the Black Sea port, which is their only warm uh, weather port, which is strategically important, but uh, again, equally wrong because it was Ukrainian territory. But never to say the last, it's complicated situation that if this continues like it is with perpetual war with no end in sight you could end up seeing two superpowers at war directly Russia I still consider them a superpower and of course the United States and maybe even China could get involved because a lot of people are not aware that there is a rival to NATO and no it's not the Warsaw Pact because they're defunct it's the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, which is an alliance between China and Russia. And they meet in Shanghai, and, they, and the Chinese military trains with the Russian military. So if we end up going to war against Russia, then we'd have to fight China, too. It could be a very big thing. And I, I just don't like endless wars with no end in sight, when things have been made worse. 
since the Iraqi invasion. There's just nothing good that can come of it. Anyway, this is the Box Star Rays and out. I've ran it for 10 minutes. Anyway, you have a nice day, and I'll see you 25 billion years. I will.